Hello and welcome to Hillview online platform. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It is Thursday, we are relaxed and it has been a very hectic day for us here in the studio. I am, I am, yeah, I'm actually trying to relax. It's been a busy day, but yet a very, yeah, resourceful and, yeah, useful day. We have actually beginning, begin a new series in the Expansion Revolution Nuggets uh, podcast. You need to check that recording. I, t I tell you, here in the studio, it was an awesome moment. We are talking about principles of budgeting. Remember, God's plan for your life revolves around money. If you don't know how to manage your money well, the likelihood is you would miss God's plan and blame the devil and blame God for what you could have learned skills of doing. So I'm encouraging you, go to YouTube and make sure that you search OJ Matiba or go to subscribe to our podcast on Apple, on Google, on Spotify, any of the platform that we are. We are trying to spread this word first for you, our partners at Hillview Church. And very soon we would register those of you who are online, online partners so that you may be able to benefit from the resources that we are able to produce from here. So make sure that you check OJ Matiba uh, a, a, a podcast either on any of the, the, the podcasts that you want or on uh, YouTube. Otherwise, let's get to work. Let's get to work for today. I have two Bibles here with me. It's going to be work. It's going to be interesting. Please don't go away. The way that I'm going to share with you, it's very important. And I feel it's, it's an area that, yeah, most of the time we, 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 we take it for granted. I think too many times as Christians, I think we forget who we are. We focus much more on our weaknesses, much more on our mistakes, much more on our family backgrounds, our educational background, and the nature of our economy for us to decide on whether we can reach the destiny that God has prepared for us. So in this session, I want to deal with who, who are you? Yeah, because I'm talking to you. Who are we? Who are you? Who are we? Who are we? Who are we as Christians? And, and what is our makeup? And how should we be? And what should we do? And how should we do things? It's a very basic teaching, but I can tell you, you are going to see how profound it is because at a very personal life, I, I, I want to be what I'm about to teach here. I want to live what I'm about to teach here. I want to fully, you know, show what I'm about and I want my life to manifest what I'm about to teach here. And I can tell you the difference between those who fall away and those who stay in the truth and go to where God wants them to go. It's understanding what I'm trying to, what I'm going to be sharing today. Who are you? Because here's the important thing. You can't become the best version of who you are if you don't know who you are. Yeah, the only best way for you to become the best of yourself is when you know who you are, where you come from, what you are made up of, and what you are capable of doing. So knowing who you are gives you the platform of confidence to drive towards the destination of our dreams. And I think that as believers, most of the time, we don't have that revelation. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today's word. As you sit on this word today, I pray for revelation knowledge for all who are watching, that you may empower them. I pray that the spirit of revelation may come upon the, all those who are watching. Let them be empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost. And more than empowered, let them be transformed in the inner man, that they may perceive these things by the spirit of God. In Jesus' name. Hosea chapter number 4, and I'm starting from verse number 6. It's a common scripture. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Since you priests refused to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. Let me put this text in context before I take out of it what I want to use because it's, 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 it's theologically uh, correct to do that. Hosea, the prophet, was the last prophet that was sent to the northern kingdom. Remember what happened after uh, uh, Solomon died and the kingdom went to his, 
to his children and and there was division in Israel and Jeroboam uh, rebelled from Jehoboam and formed what we call the Northern Kingdom which was part of Israel that was uh, in the north side and there was also part of Israel that was on the on the on the south side now Hosea was the last great prophet that God sent to the Northern Kingdom and what we know is that when the Northern Kingdom was set up it was set up by priests that was not approved by Jehovah so this priest they had rejected the norms and the views and the practice that Jehovah the God of Israel had adopted they are aware of what was expected by the priest to do and some of them were not the priests according to the order of of the Bible so so because of that they kept the knowledge that they knew of the right God to themselves and they did not use that knowledge to teach the northern kingdom what God expect from them in the process of that the nation that grew up in the northern kingdom served Baal they started serving Jehovah but as new children were born and young people were becoming leaders they did not know the ordinance of God and therefore they were unaware of the principles of God because the priests were refusing to share information that was correct that they had when Israel was one nation with the people in the northern kingdom in the process of that then the people of Israel who were in the northern kingdom ended up being destroyed after this last prophet now this last prophet brought about a very profound message that has become a theme in the Bible that God gave to him to send to Israel in the northern kingdom he said to them God was saying to them my people are being destroyed because of lack of knowledge if you look at the Hebrew word that is used there dark which means it can mean ignorance at a very strong etymological understanding it means to be unaware or lack of awareness so God was saying my people are being destroyed because they are not aware of how they should worship me and we have so far been able to extract a principle in this text that when people do not have the proper knowledge they get destroyed and that's what I want us to use for this text that this nation of the northern kingdom was destroyed by the Assyrian after this prophecy because they did not know how to worship Yahweh the right way God eventually not God their level of disobedience and their level of ignorance of doing things in ignorance exposed them to the enemy who was the Assyrian and they defeated them and they took them as slaves and the northern kingdom was no more it is important for you to notice when we do things that are outside the knowledge system of God or things that are based on ignorance or on knowledge system that does not agree with God would end up in a place of destruction that that's a learning curve from this text but I want you to take this premise of the Bible that when we don't know or lack of knowledge can lead to destruction to use it to talk to a principle of who are we when we don't know who we are especially the New Testament believers who we are in Christ the likelihood is that would get destroyed by our unawareness or our lack of ignorance or our ignorance would kill us or lead us into places where we don't serve God as we ought to I think as a, as, as a preacher this is part of my core belief that if we can get to know who we are in Christ then a lot of things that disturbs us a lot of things that takes us away from the kingdom a lot of things that stands as obstacles in our way would immediately move away from us if you can know your real DNA that you are a child of God that you are born of God that your DNA is from God then your perspective and your analysis and your overlook of things would change I mean think about what happens when you recognize that your your your, your daddy which is your earthly daddy is so and so or so and so it changes you when you recognize that based on your background which is a social background you have access to this and that and that and you are and you are capable of doing that and that it changes you here's a key principle when we know who we are we get to know what we are capable of 
We get to know what we have access to. We get to know what can stop us and what cannot stop us. That's what knowing yourself in Christ can do for you. It can help you know that there is no one, no demon, no devil that can stop you. It can help you know that you have spiritual backing from heaven that can empower you to drive towards the place of your dreams. It can allow you to know that heaven is your backup and those who are with you are many and more powerful than anything that is against you. I think most of the time we settle for mediocrity because we don't understand who we are. And, and like I said, when I began this, 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 this recording, that one of the things that I recognize is that I, at a personal level, is I want to be who God says I am. I want to do what God says I can do. I want to achieve what God says I can achieve. Come on, say that with me. Say, I want to be what God says I am. And you can type that in your comment section. Say, you want to be what God says you are. And, and, and I don't know, maybe there are people like me out there who is watching this program who are saying, not only do I want to be that, I want to do what God says I can do. You can type that in the comment section. You want to do what God says you can do. Not only that, I want to drive towards the destination that when God created me, he wanted me to go there. That's where I want to go. And, and, and I'm about to, to get into this Bible. You can see today I have two Bibles. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to, yeah, I want to take you to some truth that I think are very powerful. So turn with me, if you can, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. If you can, I want you to open that text. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 17. I want to take time on this. We are not in a hurry. I mean, we have all the time to get into God's word. And I'll stop where I'll stop. But I think I want to build something very important. Remember what is my key thought. If you don't have knowledge, you get destroyed. What you don't know cannot build you. Access to knowledge is the first principle of success. Majority of the people, I, I don't know, you know, we have done a message that says don't leave the brains outside, outside the church when you come to church. I think we know that knowledge is important for doing life. We would all agree that for you to live a successful life, you need to know a lot of things because knowledge would make you employable, would, make, would help you make right decision, would make you go far. We agree about knowledge of life. Not only that, we can talk about science as a form of knowledge, that when you are scientific in approach, which means you have a knowledge system that is approved by science, then you are likely to become more successful in anything that is scientific because your orientation in terms of knowledge system is aligned in the knowledge system. But I have a problem. When we come to the things of God, we seem, not, we seem to refute the idea that knowledge about God and the knowledge system about the things of God, it's important for your success in your faith walk. Faith is a system. It's a knowledge system. You, you can't know God without knowing his word. You can't know God without knowing how he does things. You can't know God without knowing what he did in your life to transform you and to change you and what he has in store for you. I mean, you can't drive towards the destination that God has created for you if you don't know the promises that are given to you freely by the grace of God. That's why we have to study the word. That's why you have to sit for a program like this. Because just like there are experts in the science world, and that's why they, just like there are experts who can teachers based on their experience of working in life, even in the study of the way. That's why we ministers, we also get trained because we can train you in the face of faith and help you to grow so that you have a knowledge system that is aligned to the spiritual world. Just like you have a knowledge system that is aligned to the science world and you have a knowledge system that is aligned to your culture. It's important. So let's embrace that knowing God and walking the life of faith and living for God. It's a knowledge base. There are a lot of things that you need to learn in order for you to become the best version of what God wants you to be. Just like you need to go to a PhD and learn a lot of things in the science world in order for you to become the best version of yourself in the spiritual level and become a spiritual giant, you need to learn a lot of things and know who you are, the privileges you have, the power that you have, the capabilities that comes unto you because you are a child of God. Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new 
creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want to deal with this and I want to take time. I think I won't finish what I want to talk about today because I needed to use that platform to arrive here. That for you to become the best version of yourself, you need to know who you are. Now let's start at the beginning. When you come to Christ, when you gave your life to Jesus and you get born again, you were, you were changed into a new creation, a completely brand new new creation and i want to take you to the greek word that is used here that's why i'm using uh, my 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 bible this is a new testament word study it has every greek word for uh, uh, that is used in the bible because i think it is important for you to understand that so the greek word that is used here for for new is the word kairos and it means new nature it means when you are a new creation, it means that your nature becomes new. In other words, you become a brand new creation. And, 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 and the Greek word for, for creation is kritis. It, it means, so that's why we talk about kairos kritis, which means a new creation. It means, it's, this, this, this word new, at its etymology means that this is a new nature that is unprecedented. In other words, when you give your life to Jesus and you get born again, you become a new being that have not existed before. And the word creation there uh, uh, can also mean, in the Greek, it also implies a class of being. It, it means uh, the, the total sum of a being that has been made out of nothing. In other words, you are not proceeding from something that have been existing. You are a creation that is new. So that's what you become when you give your life to Jesus. You become a brand new person. What does that mean? It means you are not upgraded. It, it means you have not been renovated. It means your status have not been upgraded. No, you are a completely new person. And, and I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into that. But I want to say it right here. And the scripture says, all things are new. If you study that word things there, it can, it can imply things as things that are found in nature. But it also has a very strong etymology of systems. So all nature and systems that you now begin to operate on are new. What am I saying to you? There's a new world order that exist for a new believer. When you give your life to Jesus, you are entering into a new kingdom. That's what Paul says in Colossians chapter number two, verse number 14, that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son, of his light. Like that word translated means like you have been transferred, like you have been taken from one place to another. That's what has happened to you when you gave your life to Jesus. So you are a brand new person, you are a brand new creature, and you have new components, new. You are fresh, you are new. That's who you are. And there are particular principles and processes and benefits and promises and assets that are accessible to you based on your new nature. So, so that when we talk about who you should become and what you should be able to achieve, it is not based on your natural format and on your natural nature because now your, new, your nature is new and is unprecedented. That's powerful because it means it did not exist before. That's why the scripture says, if you are in Christ, and I think I need to, to explain the position of this new being, the position of this new being is in Christ. The problem that we have today is that most of us know where we are in terms of the church that we go to. If you meet a Christian and you say, are you born again? He says, no, I've started going to church. No, the pastor prayed for me. So notice that it says if anyone is in Christ, not if you are a friend to a pastor, not if you have been laid hands upon, not if you have started to go to church lately, not if you are trying to become a good person. No, if you are in Christ, you are a brand 
new person unprecedented what does that mean it means you don't have a history because you didn't exist before can i talk to people who are bound by circumstances and failures and 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 whatever that has come from their past no that's not the new born again spirit man the new born again spirit man who is in christ is a powerful human being is a powerful person who knows no limits who knows no obstacle he can go wherever god wants us to go i want to be that person Come on, type in your, in your comment section. Say, I want to be the person that God has made me to be. I want to be that new born again creation, which is powerful. Which does not live in circumstances that are limited by demonic spirit. No, I am in Christ and my position in Christ empowers me to go beyond my natural limitations. So that if I can think something, I can get it. If I can see something, I can go for it. If I can believe something, it can manifest in the real world. Why? Because my new nature empowers me to become that. I, I, I think there's a need for us to understand who we are as new born again creation. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord? If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord, this is what it means. That moment when you when you you called on the name of the Lord, because the scripture says in the book of Romans chapter number 10, it says, he who will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's the process of the change. That when you get saved, you get changed. You become a new creation. Now, look at the next thing in this text. The scripture says, the old has passed away. Perfect past tense. Your, your, your past is gone. Your old life is gone. It is not in Christ. You are now a new person who is completely fresh and new. And the way in which you do things is based on what on your position of being Christ. Now, I, some of us are still caught up on the old stuff, on the old behavior, on the old tradition, on the old places you used to go to. You are a new person. Focus on doing things that the new person likes and wants and is capable of doing. And when you do that, you are driving towards where Jesus wants you to be. I, 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 this, this blows my mind. I don't, know, I don't know what it does to me. But the fact that I am new in Christ and that my past has been taken away and that how far I can go now in my life does not depend on the family of Matiba. As much as I respect this family and this is, you know, Matiba is a very great name. <laughs> yeah, it's a very great name and I know you can also defend yours. Let's not go there. But my point of departure is how far I can go in life does not depend on where I'm coming from. Wow. <laughs> I like this. How far you can go in life does not depend on the economics of your country. It does not even depend on the economic scale, the economies of scale of your family. It depends on the DNA of Jesus whom you are in. The scripture says, if anyone is in Christ, this is why I've argued most of us are in churches but not in Christ. Most of us are friends to pastors but not in Christ. Most of us know the churches that we go to but we don't have a close relationship with Christ. Are you in him? The book of Acts says in him we live, we move and we have our being. Have you given yourself to him? Because that's when then you get the new nature. And that's new nature becomes the new way of doing things and it sets in the protocol of how things should be done in your life and in the next series of time that i'm going to be having here with you i'm going to be helping you to understand who is this new creation but today my point of departure is do you recognize that you are a new person do you recognize that you have a new nature do you recognize that your behavior does not define you? You are defined by right now the creation that God has put in you. And I like the text if you study that Greek word uh, very much, uh, uh, the, 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 the word new that is used there. Because in the Greek, you can use different ways to mean new. 
uh, like like news, which means new, like uh, something that is recent or something that have recently been introduced. So it's new, but it's not it's it's not it's it's not fresh. It's not something that it's something that have existed, but it may be new to somebody else. Who we are in Christ, it's new. Who we are in Christ, it's a completely different person who is unprecedented. You are a new creation. You are a brand new person. I, I, I think if I, if I can help you recognize that, come on, type in your, in, your, in your comment section, say, I am a new creation. Because here, here is my problem as a pastor. Most of the people seem to be fighting their past rather than where they need to go. And God has given them a brand new start so that once we are born again, we don't look back we move forward. That's why we, we used to sing it, a song in our all in the past that says, forward we go and backward never. That's how you should feel. You should feel that God has given you a new platform, a brand new platform to go forward with your life. And stop allowing the past to stop you. I'm going to be dealing with how the soul and, 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 and the mind and your intellect needs to be renewed. But here is what I'm trying to tell you. The spirit man who is inside of you is brand new. He doesn't need to, he has not been upgraded or renewed or, or, or renovated. No, he's a brand new person with new capabilities, with no history, with, with no experience. The only thing he knows is being in Christ. And he's powerful more than what you can do, we can ever imagine. That's who you are. Now, if you associate yourself with this new concept of new life, of a new person with no history, guess what it does to your mind? It transforms your way of thinking and how you look at yourself and how you think about yourself and how you think about opportunities about you and what you think is God's plan for your life. But the problem is most of us are thinking about our past experiences, our history, our social background, and it limits us and it stops us from partaking in our new life. Remember that there, are, and, and I know this is not the discussion, there are four types of life that Jesus gives. He gives you internal life, he gives you abundant life, and he gives you the newness of life. Brand new life. That's what Jesus gives. And that's the type of a new creation that you are. You are a new creation who has been offered a new life, a new start off. Can you believe in it and embrace it? And guess what it will do? You'd look at obstacles and, and things that are stopping you, limits, and break from being an average person to go towards where God wants you to be. Embrace that. Embrace your new creation power. Embrace your new creation thinking. Embrace your new creation perspective over things. And then you will suddenly recognize the things that you think are your problem now are just the problem of the old person whom the scripture says all the old things has passed away. Perfect past. It is not going to happen. It has happened. Everything that has been an obstacle in your past is gone. Begin to entertain the new culture and you'll overcome your bad habits that might be troubling you and stopping you from becoming the person that God wants. Believe that. You're a new creation and God wants you to go far. But you can't go far if you don't recognize who you are in him. In him, you are a new creation. Stop listening to your old friends and old people who wants to pull you back to the life that you once lived because they are seeing weaknesses and they are seeing mistakes that you have done then. See your new creation aspect. So that's, that's, that's all that I have to say to you today. Know who you are. You are a new creation in Christ. You have a new DNA. You belong to God. You are a child of God. Your history is in God. Your father is God, who knows no limits, who knows no controls, who can do anything, and in him, you are capable to go far and to do more. I'm going to continue this discussion when we meet uh, next week, but let's stop it so far. In case you are watching this program and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to a life where you can become new, changed by the power of God, changed by the Spirit of God, a place where you can get a brand new start. Maybe you have been thinking, I need to change myself. I need to become a better person. Now, here's what I can help you. There's a platform for change. It is called giving your life to Jesus. In case you are watching right now 
and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Close your eyes. You may not necessarily close your eyes. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, I come before you. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Today, I believe that you died for me and you rose from the dead, that I can be saved. Forgive me of all my sins and make me your child. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come and be the Lord and the King of my life. In Jesus' name, I thank you for saving me. Amen. My friend, if you have prayed this simple prayer, nothing physical has changed, but the new born again spirit man, who is a new creation, has been deposited in you by the Spirit of God. You are a new creation. There is a lot you need to know. This is a body of knowledge. What I want you to do is that right now, send us your number so that we can help you with material that can help you build your faith and help you know what to do now that you have given your life to Christ. You have taken the first step and there are thousand steps to be taken in your walk with Christ for you to experience more, become more, do more and achieve more and all that God has for you. Just send us that number. We respect people, will not abuse your number, would we'll use it to help you to become the best that God wants you to be. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm OJ Matiba. Thank you for joining Hillview Church. We love you. Let's see you this Sunday at 9 a.m. God bless you. Real God, real people.